How to improve your English. There are many reasons why people from all over the world might need to improve their English, for business, for pleasure or because they have gone to live in an English-speaking country. It's easy to feel like your English skills are at a standstill, and it's all easy to get around that too. With a little diligence, you can be talking like a near native in no time. Expanding your knowledge. Label things in your house. Grab that pad of post-its you have laying around that you rarely ever use and start labeling the things around you. Even if you already know the simple stuff, do it anyway. Just thinking of these things in English before you think of it in your native tongue will get you thinking faster and when it takes less effort, you'll feel the progress you're making. Try to get to the point where you think of these things in English without hesitation. Sit down on your bed and go through all the labels in your house in your head. If there's something you can't remember, get up and go check what it is. And when you've hit this level, label other stuff. Graduate from window to window pane, from couch to cushion, from shirt to cotton blouse. With English, there's always another level. Keep a notebook. As you go about your day, there's bound to be some English words that you run into that you don't fully understand. This is when you whip out your handy dandy notebook. Scribble down the word and then when you go home, you can look it up. Instead of thinking, gosh, what was that word I saw on the menu at the cafe, you'll flip right to the page and learn a new word. If that's a little 2003 for you, just whip out your smartphone. Start a note or whatever app you want to use that's dedicated to new English words. Then every so often you can refer back to it and make sure you remember them all. Surround yourself with English speakers. If you have a few friends who are great at speaking English, hang out with them. Invite them over to dinner. So, your home becomes an English hub. Find a tutor to do some one-on-one -on -one with. Do a language exchange, where you can teach them your language and they can teach you theirs. Immerse yourself in it as much as you can. What it boils down to is that you must avoid your native language as much as possible. It's tempting to get home from work and sit down, turn on your TV, and revert to your native tongue with those you live with. Don't do it. Set time aside to speak English every night, even if it's just for an hour. Keep the TV to English, keep the radio to English, keep everything to English as much as possible. Look for language practice groups in larger cities where you can practice English while teaching others your native language. Read children's magazines and books. They are attractive, they tend to have many short articles or simple plot lines, and they come in many subjects science, literature, self-improvement. But more importantly, they are well illustrated. The pictures will allow you to understand many words without having to use a dictionary. You'll go faster and get more enjoyment out of it. When it comes to books, after you get to know the characters and the vocabulary used in the series, your reading gets easier and you will begin to be able to read more quickly, while still picking up expressions and vocabulary from one volume to the next. Try Nancy Drew, Animorphs, Sweet Valley Twins or any of a number of other easy series books which are widely available in libraries. If your level is above that, read anything. There is young adult fiction and plain old fiction that can up your language learning skills and envelop you in a whole new world. It's best to choose something with a lot of dialogue, it's more like real life. If your level is above that, read anything. There is young adult fiction and plain old fiction that can up your language learning skills and envelop you in a whole new world. It's best to choose something with a lot of dialogue, it's more like real life. Figure out how you learn. Everyone has their own learning style. Some people learn with their hands, some with their eyes, some with their ears, and some are a combination of the three. Your best friend may be able to recite English poetry after hearing it once when you need to see it to understand. Once you figure out how you learn, you can cater your studying habits to your abilities. And what's more, you can stop wasting time on methods that don't work for you. If your teacher talks and talks and you remember nothing, you can start taking notes. If you're reading a book and can't remember a thing, you can start reading it aloud to yourself. There are ways around everything. Learn root words, prefixes, and suffixes. Even English speakers could stand to learn root words. Since there are so many words in this dang language, around 750,000 in certain methods of counting. Let's say you run into the sentence, it was an acephalous society, you're thinking, uh, what the heck, but back up. Think about it for a second. You know that, uh, means without, amoral, asexual, asymmetrical. You know that, cephal, means, head, encephalitis, encephalogram. And you know that, ous, marks an adjective, ambitious, delicious, glamorous. All of a sudden you know that means, it was a society without a head, without a leader, boom. Who needs a dictionary? Not you. Read English language newspapers. Some newspapers use more complex language than others, so choose the right one for you. Remember that you can start with the headlines and then progress to reading the articles as you gain confidence. You can go at your own pace and pick the articles that are interesting. At least read the comics. If you have friends who are learning too, turn it into a discussion. Have everyone bring an article they found interesting and talk about it, in English, of course. You can study and talk about the happenings of the world simultaneously. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you haven't had half a dozen teachers that have told you this, you were probably taught by robots. Making mistakes is crucial. If you don't, you won't learn what's right and wrong, you won't take risks, and you won't truly grasp the concepts you're learning. It's unfortunate, it is, but it's necessary. 
This is why most people stop learning and plateau. They're afraid to talk to native speakers, they're afraid to go outside their comfort zone, they're afraid to truly expand and grow. Can you imagine if Edison would have stopped at his first mistake? <laughs>